that you had a wonderful day and that you are blessed knowing that God has kept you throughout the entire day. Now I welcome you to our Sunday night service. I pray that by God's grace that you would experience the power of God in your life and in your family's life as well. I am your host, Brother Stephen Francois. Now tonight's topic is the Holy Scriptures. Why is the Holy Scripture or the Bible is important to you? You can share in your comments below. And also, don't forget to like and share the page so that your friends and that your family can also be blessed as we continue to praise God tonight. Let us bow heads for our opening prayer. Almighty and eternal Father, we thank you, Lord, in a very special way for your loving kindness and your tender mercies. As we begin tonight's proceedings, May your Holy Spirit continue to guide us and to protect us. Be with those who are viewing online and may they continue to experience the power of God throughout their entire life. Thank you, O Lord, for hearing and for answering our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. At this time, we have three wonderful young ladies with us, Sister Janique Swin and Sister Janelle Swin, and also we have Sister Camilla Sincere. Join us this evening as we use hymn 10. Come Christians, join to sing. Alleluia, amen. Come Christians, join to sing.
number 272, give me the Bible. Hymn 272. Tell me the story of Jesus. Yeah. 
sisters for such wonderful singing. I have been blessed and I hope you have been blessed as well. Now the question that I asked earlier which was why is the Holy Scriptures or the Bible is important to you? Well for me the Bible is important to me because it contains the truth about God and it also shows us in whom we can find salvation. Now, the Bible tells us in John chapter 5, verse 13, and it says, Search the scriptures, and in them ye think ye have eternal life. Psalms 119, verse 105 also says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet, and a light unto my path. The word of God is able to lead us and gives us salvation in Jesus Christ. We just want to remind you to continue to like and share the page and invite your family and friends so they can all experience the blessings of God in tonight's service. Now at this time we'll have our intercessory prayer by Elder Maury. Father in heaven we give you glory and praise and honor because you are the great I am, the God of us all. We are grateful to you for life and for all that pertains to our spiritual and physical lives. You have provided for us, and we give you praise and honor and glory. We thank you, Lord, for Jesus, the sinner's friend, who gave his life so that we can have a more abundant life. We are happy to accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior. And we ask you, Lord, in your goodness, to have mercy upon us and forgive and cleanse us from every sin. Moreover, Father, we plead your grace to overcome temptation, to resist all the wiles of the devil, so that everything we do and say would glorify you. Thank you for this privilege of worship and fellowship. We ask, Lord, that your word would bless our hearts, correct us, instruct us, encourage us, and lead us in paths of truth and righteousness so that everything we do and say would be in harmony with your will. We ask, Lord, that your word would reach the hearts of men and women everywhere. May God, the Holy Spirit, minister grace to the preaching of your word. May everyone hearing your word tonight find Jesus and surrender their lives to you, so that all of us can look forward to your glorious appearing, when we can all live and reign with you in that land that you are now preparing for us. We ask your blessings upon those who are sick, those who are mourning. Minister to those who are leading out, Father. Help all of us to work together, to cooperate, to preach the gospel, so that when Jesus comes, he shall see up the travail of his soul and be satisfied. Into your hands we commit ourselves. Keep us faithful. And then usher each one of us into thine eternal kingdom in glory. These and all other mercies we ask with thanksgiving and with the pardon and the forgiveness from all our sins through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. This amplifies any worship service. And with no further ado, I want to welcome Sister Camilla Sincere as she bless our hearts with special music in song. So be blessed as you listen to good gospel music. I don't know about tomorrow, but I know who holds my hands because the script here tells me Jesus is in charge and he will lead and guide. I don't know about tomorrow. I just leave today. I don't borrow from its sunshine, for its skies may turn to gray. I don't worry over the future, 
For I know what Jesus said And today I'll walk beside him For he knows what is ahead Many things about tomorrow I don't seem to understand But I know and I know who holds my hand Every step is getting brighter As the golden steers I climb Every burden's getting lighter Every cloud is silver there the sun is always shining There no tear will dim the eye At the ending of the rainbow Where the mountains touch the skies Many things about tomorrow I don't see to understand but I know who holds tomorrow and I know who holds my hand I don't know about tomorrow it may bring me poverty but the one who feels the sparrow is the one who stands by me and the path that be my portion may be through the flame of flood but his presence goes before me and I'm covered with his blood many things about tomorrow I don't seem to understand but I know who holds tomorrow and I know who holds my hand many things about tomorrow That was wonderful, sweet gospel music. Now, the time has come where we'll also listen to God speaking to us through his manservant. We have a man with us tonight. He's a man of God. He loved the Lord and he loved preaching the word of God. Tonight, I bring to you a chosen man of God, pastor, a healer. I pray that you will be blessed as you preach to us God's message for us. May God bless you. Amen. Thank you very much, uh, Brother Stephen. And good evening, everyone. We are very happy that you can join us uh, on this platform for this uh, service. And we ask you to like and share the page and invite all of your friends to join us on Mission Live, Facebook and YouTube so that we can share together. And of course, um, time is of the essence, so I want to get to it uh, very quickly. So I invite you wherever you are to bow your heads 
as we pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your goodness and your blessings towards us. Thank you, Lord, that even this evening we can come together uh, to listen to your word. Oh, Lord, in times like these, we need a word from you. In times like these, we need to hear from you. So, Holy Spirit, take charge now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. This evening, I want to speak to you on the topic, It is Written. It is Written. And so, of course, uh, at the end of the message, we are going to discover something very important and special about the Bible. Uh, this book that I hold in my hand and this book that is so powerful, tonight we are going to share uh, from this book and about this book. Now, I want you to know, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, that the first recorded words of Jesus after his entrance into ministry uh, are the, an assertion of the authority of scripture. As a matter of fact, in Matthew chapter 4 and verse 4, Jesus uh, uh, said those words, and I'm going to uh, elaborate on it a little more. But he answered and said, it is written. So you see where I derive my topic for this evening's message. It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Now, when addressing man, our Lord seldom quoted scripture, but said, I say unto you. But in answer to Satan, he says, it is written. It is written. After fulfilling the Holy Spirit's assignment of fasting for 40 days and 40 nights, the book of Matthew highlights what is referred to as the famous battle between Michael, uh, Christ, and the dragon, the devil. It was a battle between the seed of the woman and the seed of the serpent. It was a battle of between the creator and the creature. It was a battle between the tempter and the deliverer. And when Christ was baptized, he said he did not go rather to Jerusalem to preach glad tidings, but retired into a wilderness to be tempted of the devil. The scholars, some scholars say that this hand-to-hand -hand combat occurred probably in the great wilderness of Sinai where Moses and Elijah fasted 40 days. The devil begins by questioning the divine nature of Jesus. And Matthew chapter 4 and verse 3, he says, And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, he's questioning the, the, the divine nature of Jesus. If thou be the Son of God, command these stones to be made bread. In other words, he was saying, if God were thy father, uh, he, he, would, he would not see you starve. For all the beasts of the forest are his. Command these stones to be made bread. He was saying to Jesus, if at your baptism there was a voice from heaven saying that this is my beloved son and that voice is the voice of God, then you, Jesus, command these stones to be turned into bread. He was saying, if the Spirit led you here, uh, then why are you so hungry? Uh, command these stones to be made bread. But Christ refused, hallelujah, Christ refused to comply. Uh, Christ refused to yield to the temptation, to yield to the challenge of the devil. He refused to comply with the devil's suggestion. And he answered and said, it is written. It is written, hallelujah. In answering the devil, Christ quoted from the Old Testament. You know, Christ quoted from the Old Testament. Stay with the preacher this evening because I am going somewhere with that. Christ quoted from the Old Testament. As a matter of fact, 
that came out in uh, Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 3, or where the Bible says, And he humbled thee, and suffered thee to hunger, and fed thee with manna, which thou knowest not, neither did thy fathers know, that he might make thee know that man doth not live by bread only, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. In other words, Christ, if you look at that verse in Matthew, Christ quoted from the Old Testament. It is very instructive that Christ used the Old Testament. He used the word to counteract, to counterattack uh, the devil. Uh, stay with the preacher tonight. Tonight, in fact, when we read verses uh, in Matthew chapter 4, namely verses 3 uh, to 10, we would observe that Christ answered and counteracted all temptations of Satan with it is written. My friends, my friends, I want to let you know that it is important to know the word of God. You see, in this day and age we are living in, we are tempted on every side. Temptations will come our way. But of course, how will we be able to be victorious? How will we be able to fend off the wiles and the attacks of the enemy? Is through the word of God. That's why we must know what the word says, what the Bible says, and we must practice what the Bible says. Would somebody say amen? So, so, so he did not use philosophy. Jesus did not use philosophy. He did not use logic. Come on here. He used, he used what he himself inspired men to write. He used the word of God. You know, many times when we are in situations, we want to portray ourselves as brilliant. We want to portray ourselves as, as learned and intelligent. We go all with all sorts of philosophies and all sorts of logic, you know. But I have discovered, ladies and gentlemen, in when it comes down to spiritual matters and when it comes down with the battle between good and evil, Christ and Satan, when it comes down to the struggles that you are going through, it is not it is not it is not carnal it is it is spiritual let me tell you something when it comes down to these things hello it is only the word of god that will be able to use to get the victory we must know the word of god it is written so what is clear from jesus's quote jesus quoting from the bible in answering and defeating all of satan's temptation is the authority and the validity of the Bible. Oh, the psalmist says uh, of the Bible in Psalm chapter, uh, the 119 division, sorry, and verse 11, he says, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Then the psalmist says also in division 119, and verse 105, he says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Hallelujah. Friends, it is clear from scripture that the authority of the Bible is a direct result of its inspiration. Hello, let me say that again. It is clear from scripture that the authority of the Bible what gives the authority to the Bible is a direct result of its inspiration. Jesus quoted from what he inspired men to write. He used, he, in, in his fierce battle with the devil, he used the Bible. When he began his ministry on earth, he quoted from Isaiah 61 and verse 1 where he says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me to preach. Are you listening to me, somebody? Jesus used the Bible. And so, if knowing the Bible, the word is so important to Jesus. Hear the preacher here tonight. If knowing the Bible, knowing the word is so important to Jesus, it should be important to those who accept him. It should be important to all of us. Would you say amen, somebody? So tonight, I am presenting you the word to you, the word of God. The Apostle Paul, understanding the importance of the scripture, declares in 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16. 
He says, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Then he says in verse 17, 2 Timothy 3, 17, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Hold on. Some time ago, a little boy named Joey, who was nine years old, went to Sabbath school class and he heard his teacher talk about how Israel escaped the clutches of Pharaoh and the Egyptians. When Joey got home, he, asked, he was asked by his mother what he had learned that morning in Sabbath school. Well, mom, our teacher told us how God sent Moses behind enemy lines on a rescue mission to lead the Israelites out of Egypt. When he got to the Red Sea, Joey continued, he had his engineers behind a Paton bridge. And all the people walked across safely. He used his walkie-talkie to radio headquarters and call in an airstrike when the Egyptians were closing in on him. Then sent in bombers to blow up the bridge and destroy the enemy. And all the Israelites were saved. No joy. Is that really what the teacher taught you? His mother asked. Well, no mom. But if I told you the way the teacher did, tell me you would never believe it. Ladies and gentlemen, why, why, why this might sound funny, a little amusing by joy, it does show an attitude that is prevalent in our world today as far as the status of of the Bible is concerned. Many would talk about the Bible as if it were based on myth, as if it were a legend. Some question its historical accuracy. Others propose it is merely fiction and, and the intervention of mankind. But the Apostle Paul, hear the preacher tonight, the Apostle Paul who himself wrote 13 books of the Bible, insist that the Bible is not based on myth or legend. It is not fictitious. It is not fiction. But it came from the mind of God. Would somebody say amen over there? So he says, uh, he says in, in the New International Version, 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16, Paul says, All scripture... He didn't mix words to, to say, well, maybe a few or some. He says, all. I, I understand all to be all. Everything. Tut, moon, bagai. From, from, from Genesis to Revelation. From cover to cover. All scripture, he says, is God breathe. Come on there. And is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. The question is... What emphasis should we place on the Holy Scriptures as we live from day to day? How is Scripture unique? What is the Bible good for? Huh. These are good questions and relevant questions. And what will living in my life according to the Bible do for me? These are questions. Let me seek to answer these three questions quickly with the remaining time that we have. So number one. How is scripture unique? Paul begins, again, 2 Timothy 3.16, by affirming the excellency of scripture. He says, all scripture, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. All scripture is, is God-breathed. So the scripture is excellent. Paul affirmed, affirmation does not indicate that some section of the Bible are God's word and others are not. There are people who say, well, 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 part of the scripture, the Old Testament is done away with. We don't need to use that. And they hold on to the New Testament. But Paul says that all scripture 
And if you have a closer look at the Bible, you would realize, you would realize that a lot of the scriptures in the New Testament are also found in the Old Testament. They go hand in hand. The Bible does not contain the word of God. It is the word of God. Would somebody say amen? The book of Revelation shows that the word of God had to be inspired. When you read, for example, who can explain a beast coming out of the sea with seven heads and ten horns? Who can explain the meaning behind seven seals that a lot of people don't read and, and understand? Who is the woman that sits on the scarlet colored beast? In fact, God gave the vision and he explained the vision to John. Would you say amen? The scripture is excellent. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. Would somebody say amen? And so it is clear that the Bible is a cooperative effort. Listen there. The Bible is a cooperative effort between God himself and the individuals he chose to write the scripture. Huh? Can I say that again? So the, it is clear that the Bible is a cooperative effort between God himself and, and the individuals he chose to write the scripture. Why God used the individual personalities of the men who first penned scripture to explain what God wanted to communicate to us. He is the originator of the Bible. Would somebody say amen? So Peter, in 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 20, Peter says, knowing this verse, that no prophecy of the scripture, no prophecy of the scripture, and you'll find prophecy in the Old Testament, and you'll find prophecy in the New Testament. He says, no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. I love that. Verse 21, for the prophecy came not in all time by the will of man. Hey. But holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Would somebody say amen? So God used the individuals, but the Holy Spirit carried them, breathed, inspired them, so that by the grace of God, the word of God can be written so that we can have clear instruction as to God's will for our lives. Would somebody say amen? So the Good News Bible says, in 2 Peter 1, 20 and 21, the Good News Bible says, I, I, I just love the simple way it is rendered. Above all else, however, remember that none of us can explain by ourselves a prophecy in Scripture. For no prophetic message came ever came just from the human will. No. But people were, who were under the control of the Holy Spirit as they, were, as they, as they spake the message that came from God. Would somebody say amen? You see, my friends, God's word is also unique because it gives us specific insight into who God is and what he expects of us. It is unique because it is God's autobiography and his commentary of history. You see, the Bible is unique because the Bible explains itself and it has enough recording that guarantee our salvation would somebody say amen if you read the bible from cover to cover if you read the bible hello you will not only discover history you will not only discover prophecy but let me tell you something you will discover the author of the bible you would come to know the truth you would come to know jesus christ you would come to know enough that jesus christ died for you he loves you and he wants to save you. He's coming back again for you. Oh yes, when you read the Bible. That's why this book is so important. Number two, what is the Bible good for? What is the Bible good for? Well, I don't speculate. You see, I'm staying strictly with the Bible. The second part of verse 16 uh, in Timothy says, informs us that because the scripture is inspired, it is therefore profitable or it is beneficial, useful, and, and valuable for four things. Number one, first, it is to be used to instruct and teach us as to what 
the beliefs of the Christian faith are teaching. That's why we, we, we go to church, and when we go to church, we should be using the Bible, so the Bible is good for teaching. Secondly, it is to be used to reprove and rebuke those who are in sin. You know, sometimes we as preachers, when we preach we, and we use the word, people get vexed. But that's one of the purpose of the Bible. Timothy says it. Expose our sinfulness. And let me tell you something. When, when we echo our sinfulness is exposed, oh Lord, and the Spirit prick us, oh, oh, the desire then is to, should be to run to Jesus Christ who can cleanse us from all our sins. Would you say amen? But the Bible has that purpose. You know, nowadays people like to hear nice things. They like to hear things that, you know, just make them giggle and laugh and, and make them feel good. But let me tell you something. As preachers, God is looking for preachers to use the word of God to rebuke sin in Jesus' name. Call sin by his name and let people run to Jesus Christ who is the, the one who can forgive sins. So totally, the Bible it is to be used to restore people to improve their lives, their lives and their character for correcting. And fourthly, the Bible, it is God's manual to instruct and to train us in righteousness. Oh, my friends, the Bible, the Bible is good. It's a good book. Thank God the day I, I encountered the Bible, I did not only encounter the Bible, but as I read the Bible, I encountered the God of the Bible, the author of the Bible, Jesus Christ himself. Would somebody say amen? And thirdly, what we're living by, my, my life according to the Bible do for me? What's the benefit? What can I do? Let me tell you something. The individual who wishes to be called a man or woman of God will be a man or woman who abides in his word. Living my life according to the Bible will provide in my life peace. <laughs> peace. We live in a world where, hey, 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 where peace is gone. You read the word of God, you read the Bible, let me tell you something, and you will have peace. The world is full of, of the world is full of trouble, but God offers peace. Would somebody say amen? You would have joy. Uh-huh. Amidst the chaos, amidst the confusion, you can still have peace. You can still have joy. You can still have contentment when you open the word of God and you get the sweet promises. Hello, the word of God is still relevant. It's the book for today. Would somebody say amen over there? Living my life according to the Bible will give me hope in a hopeless world. Oh yes, living my life according to the Bible will help me to face death unafraid. When you read the word of God and you understand by the grace of God that death is not the end. Hello, you understand that we sleep in the grave, but there is a great resurrection coming when we shall be trained. You know, you can face death with that certainty that there is still hope beyond the grave. Will somebody say amen? Living my life according to the word of God will take my mind from the material to the eternal. Would somebody say amen out there? Living my life according to the Bible will help me live holy in this sinful world. Yes, if a man lives his life according to the Bible, hello, then we don't have to talk about same sex. Mary, oh Lord have mercy. Come on here, oh, eh? because the Bible says... Marriage is between a man and a woman, male and female, God created. When we read the word of God, if we read the word of God, hello, a woman don't have to sleep with a woman. Come on, talk to me, somebody. Huh? The Bible is clear on that. If children, young people want to read the word of God, young people, you want to read the word of God and order your life according to the word of God. Then let me tell you something. You will be a blessing to your parents. You will be a blessing to your community. You will be a blessing to your nation. Young people, pick up the word of God and read the word of God. Oh, oh yes. An old preacher once said, this book will take you, take you from sin or sin will keep you from this book. Lord, have mercy. You see, verse 17, Father tells us that the goal of instruction, correction, and restoration comes as a result of applying God's word to one's life. 
We have to apply the word of God. So 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 17. That the man of God may be perfect. Totally furnished unto good works. Would somebody say amen? The idea here is not uh, that anyone is absolutely perfect. But that the scriptures uh, have laid down the way which leads to perfection. No wonder the Bible, the Bible, the Bible, no wonder the Bible, the written word leads us to relationship with our living God. You cannot accept the truth of the Bible without accepting the truth. Capital T R U T H of the Bible. In John chapter 14 and verse 6, Jesus Himself says. I am the truth, the way, and the life. Hello, I only sing to me somebody. Hello, Jesus is truth, and the word of God amplifies truth in Jesus' name. The Old Testament highlights the ministry of Jesus, and the New Testament endorses the ministry of Jesus. Both testaments, old and new, highlights the life of Jesus. Both testaments validate the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Both Testament, New and Old Testament agree that the Old Testament indicates that he will be born in Bethlehem of Judea. Micah chapter 5 and verse 2. The New Testament endorses his birth in Bethlehem of Judea. Matthew chapter 2 and verse 1. You see the Bible is cohesive, my friends. They work together, all a New Testament. And the list can go on and on and on. Oh yes, as I come to a close, Paul had to be inspired to write. Uh, he says, all scripture, all scripture is given by inspiration. It is not some, all scripture. And so my appeal, my, 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 my encouragement to us is to, is, to, is to read the word of God. Don't be biased. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. Oh, before affirming the excellency of scripture in 2 Timothy chapter 3, 16. Paul tells us in 2 Timothy 3, 1 to 5, that perilous time will come. Perilous times when men will no longer abide in some doctrine and will become lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Sadly, this is taking place in our world today. Yet, this time of fear falling away, we read that the scriptures are able to make one wise unto salvation. We also read in the book of Hebrews that the word of God is living and active and sharp as a, as a sergeant uh, knife. In, in, in Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12, the Bible says, For the word of God it is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even the dividing asunder of the soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a dishonor of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. That's how powerful the word of God is. Oh, the God who created us wants us to love the book that he inspired. He wants us to embrace the truth in the book. He wants us to live by the book. Maybe you have not been reading the book. Maybe you have not accepted the Bible. But today I trust by the grace of God that, that you would have, you'd have gotten a, a closer insight. You would have been motivated to read this book more. To study this book more. And not only that, but to apply the principles of this book, of the Bible, the Word of God. The inspired Word of God. Apply the principles to your life. So, the story is told. The story is told of a mother and daughter. They were busy cleaning up, cleaning up, because the Christmas season was coming around. And oh, yes, the season is coming. And they were cleaning up and dusting up the shelf and so on. And, and just then the daughter bounced upon a, a book, a book. That book seemed to have been there for many, many years. Dust and cobweb and all sorts of old things were on the book. And she took the book and she started dusting and dusting. And so she asked her mom, Mom, who is this, who this book belong to? She said, my dear, this book is God's book. And the daughter looked at mom and she said, listen, mom, well, better we give back God his book. Because nobody is using his book. Oh, my friends, today it's sad to say 
that people read the newspaper, they read the horoscope, they read all sorts of fables, all sorts of storybook and philosophies. But the most important book, the greatest book of all books, people are not reading as they should. The Bible is the most popular book, but the Bible is the least read book. If the Bible is rightly placed, crimes and violence will be reduced. Husbands and wives will be faithful to each other. Say amen. If the Bible is read more, marriages and families will be between, marriage will be between a man and a woman and not between a man and a man. If, if the Bible is read, families will be enriched, lives will be better. If you read the Bible, if you read the word of God and study the word of God, your life will be better by the grace of God. So tonight, I trust that as you listen, the Spirit of God will have motivated you. And maybe you have been you have been reading the Bible, you have been studying the Bible. For many of you, we have been studying together in the Christ for the Crisis Gospel Explosion. For many of you, we have been studying together as recent with conversations with God. And every Sabbath we are online, opening the Word of God before you and studying portions of the Word of God. Or you have been studying and wrestling with the Word of God. But tonight, you got to order your life according to the principles of the Word of God. You got you to say, Lord, I, 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 I want to give up. I want to let you have your way. I want to order my life. I want to give my life to Jesus who is the author of this book. I want to surrender to Jesus Christ right now. I think on the screen you can see the card. You can see the, the lines. I'm going there and, and, and click on that card and, 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 and make a decision for Jesus Christ. Make a decision for Jesus Christ. Surrender your life to Jesus Christ. Get baptized. The Bible says, He that believeth and is baptized, the same shall be saved. So tonight, I want to ask you three questions. Three questions. Do you believe that both, the, both testaments, the Old Testament and the New Testament, are inspired by God and are relevant to us living in 2020? If you believe that, then I want you to type a B, a capital B, or a B for Bible on your, on your, on your screen. Type it now. If you believe that the both testaments are inspired by God and they are still relevant in 2020. Question number two. Do you believe that knowing and understanding the Bible can give you the power to live a life that is pleasing to God? If you read, you know, and you understand the Bible can give you the power to live a life that is pleasing to God. If you believe that, then I want you to type yes. Type yes. And the last question tonight, last question. Do you believe that God wants you to accept the truths of the Bible? If you believe that, then type another yes or a why for yes in Jesus' name. And I still want to give you an opportunity to go on the line, go on the, on, the, on the card, on the link, follow the link, and sign up, fill up the card, and surrender your life to Jesus Christ. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Jesus is coming soon, and he wants you to be ready tonight. That's why he has given us his word, so that by the grace of God, we will live victorious lives. Tonight, I know you love Jesus, and I know you love his word. Tonight, I know that you will accept him. Accept him tonight and be saved. As I say, a special prayer for you tonight. Heavenly Father, we give you praise and we give you thanks for your word. Thank you, Lord, for this, this book, this gem that you have given to us. Thank you, Lord. May you help us to read, to understand, and to apply to our lives. Thank you for all our online viewers, all those who have viewed, all those who have listened. And we pray, God, that the Spirit of God will help them to accept your word and to accept the truths in your word and to surrender to you. Thank you for those, even now, who have made decisions. Whether it's a decision to accept your word, to believe your word, to practice your word, whether it's a decision to accept Jesus Christ. And we hope everybody will do that, dear Heavenly Father. Motivate them to the aid of your Spirit. We give you praise. We give you thanks. Bless us. 
And in Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen and amen. That was wonderful preaching by the man of God. I do hope that you have been blessed. And also, I hope that you are willing to surrender your life to Jesus and accept him as your Lord and Savior. No one Ella but always remind me that the Bible acronym is Basic Instructions Before Leaving Earth. Friends, surrender your all to Jesus so that when he comes, you will gain eternal life to reign and live with him forever and ever. Also, I just want to remind you of our Wednesday night prayer night meeting. Invite your friends. Don't look at it alone. Don't view it alone, but share it because there is good news for you and for me. And also, I just want to remind you of the Friday evening service, Youth Live Unplug. Invite your friend, invite your children so that they can view on, on Sabbath morning at 9 a.m. Our Sabbath service continue. So I pray you will have a blessed week and know that God is with you, but you need to surrender to him so he can save you. Let us pray to close. Almighty God, be with your people, O Lord. Those who are viewed online, may they experience you personally in their lives. May they surrender their lives over to you so that when you come, they and many others, O oh Father, will be saved. May you give them the strength that they need to go throughout the week. And may they continue, Lord, that may they continue to praise you and to glorify your name. That in spite of their situation, O oh Father, your name would continue to be lifted high. Bless and keep your people. And when you come, save us, I pray, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. May God bless you and enjoy the rest of the week. Oh, victory.